I'm satisfied with just a kind of below, a little silver and a little gold. Now it is true that when Peter wrote there was not really a pestilence as such, there was persecution. And Peter is encouraging his people, the church, to stay faithful. Even in the midst of disaster, in the midst of death and sickness, in the midst of persecution, stay faithful. And he showed them how when we talk about the Christian graces. Tonight we want to look at verses 12 through 15 of 2 Peter 1. 12 through 15 of 2 Peter 1. Now, normally we would read what the King James said, but I want to use a different translation again tonight. Peter says, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth. The first thing we want to notice is that personal pronoun. Peter says, for this reason, I. And as I was reading this, I'm thinking, uh, what is he speaking of? Where is he at this moment? Is he talking about himself as a preacher, as an elder, as an, uh, as an apostle? Because this is important as we continue to look at what is going to happen. What, what, what's our responsibility to the church in times like this? Verse 4, in, in verse 4 we begin a new section dealing with the Christian's nourishment in the Word of God. That can go as far as verse 21. The focus turns, listen carefully, from the work of God in individual Christians to the word of God as the instruments of nurture. Let me repeat that. The focus turns from the work of God in our lives as Christians to the word of God as the instrument of our nurture, rather. So the question still is, who is responsible for this work? for spreading the word. I want us at this time to go over to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Please keep your Bibles marked up 2 Peter, but I want us to notice 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. There are some important thoughts I want to bring to your attention. When Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, Notice as he describes his work among them. Notice with me verse, uh, verse number 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 6. All right, let's go back to verse 1. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi we were, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Now look at the mind of Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Looking at the mind of God, Paul is showing us in this passage that, of course, he was treated badly. But because or despite the fact that he was treated badly or rudely did not mean that he should return the favor. It, it tells us how important that gospel is and how we're going to suffer in trying to help others to grow in Christ. 
It's not going to be as easy as we think it is. Hey, that person is a Christian. That person would understand. Not necessarily so. But I have to understand what my responsibilities are. Notice in verse 3 he says, For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in God, but as we were allowed of God. Listen to this now. We were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. We, Paul is talking about, not only the apostles, but preachers as well and leaders of the church. We are allowed. In other words, God granted us a favor. It's the favor of God. So it, it, it is not how people respond to us. It's what God has placed in us that we have to do. It is good that everyone responds well, but that's not normally the case. But that doesn't change our responsibility. That doesn't change our attitude. As it says, we were allowed of God to put in trust with the gospel. Do you know what that means? It's like a parent. Here comes this little baby in your arms that God puts in your hand. And your responsibility is to nurture. Your responsibility is to teach, to bring this little thing up into the way of God. Do it as, as God would have you to do, as God wants you to do it. And so in the church, we're going to see in a minute that Paul says something that is good. For he says in verse 6, Nor of men sought we glory. Neither of you nor yet of others when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Verse 7. Look at verse 7. We will deal with this in a minute. He says, notice how they came, how he came in. He says, but were gentle among you even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Now, the idea of nurse here is not the idea of, work, of working in the hospital. A nurse was like a person put in charge of rearing children. That's the, 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 that's the idea. In charge of rearing children that were not really yours. And Paul says when we came into you, we came in gentle among you. Look at verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. To me, that's the attitude Peter is talking about here in, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Paul says, or Peter said, for this reason... Now, since Asia Minor Christians possess a faith that, that sustains godliness, Peter now insists that they live by truth. Peter reminded his audience three things to retain the contents of, of, of this epistle. Look at verse 12 again, and verse 13, and verse number 15. Look at verse 12 again. Oh, back to 2 uh, Peter chapter 1 and verse, verse 12. To put you always in remembrance of these things, though we know them, and be established in the present truth. What is Peter saying? You could have heard this thing over and over, yet we have to repeat them. We have to keep repeating them. Not only, let's look at verse number 13. He says, Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle or in this body to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Elders, preachers, teachers, we have to keep on doing this. Look at verse 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease 
to have these things always in remembrance. Now, when you look at an Old Testament passage, Isaiah 62, verses 6 and 7, let me read this passage to you. Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7. God said, I have set watchmen on your walls. O Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes and uh, uh, until he awakens Jerusalem a praise in the earth or he makes Jerusalem a praise. L listen carefully. Some of the things we talk about, some people don't want to hear. But what is amazing in all this is when we are talking about when we think we're talking about somebody else, we can hear the resounding amens. But then when you are involved in these things, you get angry when they're repeated. What shall we do? What should we do as preachers and elders? Uh, 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 what should we do? Should we keep silent because you don't like it? Because it touches a part of you? No. No. Peter is simply saying, I'm going to do this until I die. And when I die, I hope you remember what I said unto you. The Apostle Paul has almost the same sentiment. He says he would not shun to declare, he did not shun to declare the whole counsel of God. L listen to this. What's the principle here? The principle here is this. Christian leaders who are sharp review crucial doctrines regularly for their people. That's what Peter is saying. We have to review doctrines regularly because we are apt to forget. So sometimes, yes, we have to keep on repeating some things. If they are right, wonderful. If they're wrong, or uh, if you're wrong, then you need to change. You don't need to run. Because you must have heard something that touches deep down in you, that shows you still have a conscience. Listen, how do we apply this? Listen. We need to be reminded of what we already know to prevent dullness toward it, or worse still, forgetting it. Remember uh, verse number eight, or number nine, verse number eight? A nine in, in, in Second Peter 1. For if you do these things, they make you that you won't be barren nor unfruitful. So here the church needs stability in doctrine. The church needs stability in doctrine. This has been the downfall of many congregations. But listen carefully. Downfall don't mean that they stop growing. Downfall means that they forgot doctrine and have come close to becoming another denomination. So we have to keep on because, listen, we have to be, learn how to be stable. If Christians are not aware of the peculiar trends of our day, we will become unstable. We will become unstable. So Peter says, again, go back to verse number 12, I will not be negligent. Back to verse 12, listen to what he says. He says, wherefore I, it will not be, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. Again, remember, circumstances were difficult as they are now. And it is always easy to make some excuses, as we do now. 
So Peter says, I have to remind you about what God wants from you, about what the scripture says on any subject. Listen, Peter, Peter is about to present a proposal with a purpose. He says, you notice that word will? It means to be about to, to be on the point of. Peter will ever be ready to remind the Christians of God's word. Peter will die, but truth will continue. Even though Peter is about to die, this passage will live into centuries to come. Peter is anticipating his death. If, if, if the timing is right, it is at the time when Nero is, is the emperor. And he is going, giving Christians the most difficult time possible. So 2 Peter still speaks to us in the 21st century. 2 Peter written in the 1st century still speaks to us in the 21st century. No preacher can afford to build his ministry on personality. Peter is an apostle. He is an elder. He is a gospel preacher. But listen where his emphasis is. It's not on himself. But rather building up the church according to what has been revealed to him. The word of God. Again, we, 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 we repeat. No preacher can, build, uh, can afford to build his ministry and personality some human system or gimmick. I remember talking to a brother not, not too long ago where they had a huge church. The preacher was one of those dynamic speakers in our brotherhood. And as soon as he left, more than half the congregation went back to the denominations they came from. What happened there? What happened there where I'm concerned was the ministry was built on the personality of this preacher. So when he turned, where else could they go? They don't know anything about the church of Christ. They didn't know anything about the church of Christ. I'm going to die. Others are going to die. Does that mean that the church is dead because the preacher? No. He's just a servant. He's not there to promote himself in any way. But to promote the gospel of Christ. We must build our ministry, if you call it that, on the eternal word of God. Peter's purpose is to remind the Christians in Asia Minor of truth. Every preacher must come to this point sooner or later. So what's the principle? It's this. Leaders must be diligent in leading the group to find truth. However, hurt that truth or whatever hurt that truth may bring, it is still our responsibility to do so. Many of us operate under the delusion that anything is good enough for the Savior. Now, I want to listen to this carefully. If that is the case, you can go anywhere, whether a, a, a church of Christ or denomination, and say it's all right. They are preaching God anyway. See, see what I'm saying? People operate under the delusion that anything is good as long as the name of Christ is used. No, no, no. Should we preach and sing without preparation? Remember, anything is good enough for the Lord as long as it is sincere. The idea is that you don't have to be good as long as you are earnest. 
that you do not need to be properly equipped to serve the Lord. How would you like your surgeon to remove your appendix with that attitude? He comes into the room and said, Mr. Glasgow, we got to remove your appendix today. Let's get ready for it. No preparation, no charts, nothing. I have not, don't even know my history. No, sir, sorry, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Mm. I want to live. I'm not your guinea pig. Too many churches have become guinea pigs to guys with new ideas, separate and apart from the scriptures, and they just suck it in. Listen, God's work should not be a hobby whereby we give him only our spare time. It demands a life to be lived carefully. It demands careful study of the word of God so that we may be able to impart to others who need to be strengthened. What Peter also says, to remind you always, my task is to remind you always of these things. Of course, the things he's talking about in the Christian graces we just mentioned in verses 5 through 8. Peter knew his, day, his, day, his days were numbered. He now speaks of important components of Christianity because so little time on earth remains for him. It looks like the older you get, the more you begin to think, man, there's so much I haven't accomplished. I have to more or less rush to accomplish more things because life is short. But suppose I begin to think like this. Well, as I'm getting older, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings anymore. I may as well leave the pulpit. I'm sorry. I may as well leave the pulpit. Because this word, it is so powerful, it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. Not because people intentionally want to do bad, but we do it anyway, and we need somebody to remind us what the Word of God teaches you, or what the Word of God teaches on that subject. We need that every day. At the point of death, we speak of things that are of most importance to us, don't we? God's purpose for the believer is to know the importance of God's word. This is a daily challenge for every leader. Remember, these things are seven things listed in verses 5 through 7. These things have to do with the Christian life. When we get sloppy with Christian living, we become a distinct liability to the cause of Christ. Are you listening? And I don't think we want to become a liability. But it happens when we are not particular about how we live, what we say, how we talk, about our behaviors. We have to pay attention to every day detail of, of living. And if we, are, if we are a liability, listen, then we are not an asset. We are not a good advertisement of Christ. We are not a help, but a hindrance. Let's face the facts. Now, if I say we are not a help, Believe me or not, I didn't say much. But if I say this, if I'm not a help, I'm a hindrance. I've just said a mouthful. And the thing is, we don't want to hear the second part. But the second part is what is so important to complete the first part. If I'm not a help, then I'm a hindrance. Then Peter says, though you know, 
He says, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know already. Though you know, you already know these matters, but nevertheless, I will remind you of them. It is one thing to know these things in our minds. It is another thing to know them in our hearts. Look at the principle here. We need to familiarize ourselves with the familiar. You get that? Now, I don't mean sometimes to treat the guys bad in any way. But I suggest to the men, air the men, when, you come, when your name is down for the Lord's Supper, don't come Sunday morning and get up there without going over it at home. You know what your responsibilities are. You can easily forget. It's amazing to see a crowd in front of you and everything is gone. But if you keep familiarizing yourself every week, this is what I'm going to do, this is how it is. Now I've said to some brothers who are, in whom I have seen some changes that you are doing a good job. You are making improvements. Because I see it. But when you keep on taking things for granted, listen to something else. Listen to this. We want to say this to the men as well. Get ready before you leave home to pray publicly. You might not be called upon, but the possibility always exists. We have to remind ourselves we are not that good to know everything that we learned 20, 30 years ago and never touch it since. We're not that good, not that intelligent. Sorry to, to burst your bubble, but that's what it is. But listen, a good minister always reminds his congregation of fundamental truths. You know, sometimes people tell me, well, Brother Glasgow, I heard that uh, two years ago. Why do you preach it again? Well, glad for you. What about the others? We need to be reminded of this. You won't believe how easy it is to forget. Let's suppose as preachers, we stop preaching the plan of salvation. You think it's an easy thing to go right back and preach it when we haven't done it in five, ten years? No, 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 no. It's not that easy, easy as, it, as it looks. Listen, the preacher who does not remind his congregation of truth is a bad minister of the gospel of Christ. We do not have to hear new and novel things all the time. Ironside said, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. <laughs> I love that quote. Many leaders today try to be sensational and spectacular to gain the attraction of the followers. But a good minister is someone who nourishes the Christians in the faith. Everyone needs an encouragement ever so often. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 6. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 6. He says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. Good doctrine. <laughs> Listen. You cannot drive a hundred miles through the countryside and enjoy the beauty of the landscape around you. Why do you drive through the countryside anyway? If not to enjoy the scenery. Now, now I know a brother in this church when he get lost, he give the impression that he's enjoying the scenery. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> But seriously, 
Seriously. We need to understand what this means. You cannot go through things hurriedly and expect to, 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 to remember anything. Neither can we speed through the Christian life and appreciate what the Lord has done for us. We need to spend time in the word of God and thus in truth. And finally, in this text, Peter says, and are established. That word established, it means to fix, to make fast, to set. Established means to put or place something firmly in a location, to cause, to be fixed, to establish in a place. The idea is st stabilizing someone in truth. For that matter, this is the reason for a new converse class. Is to stabilize people in the, in the first principles of Christianity. But sometimes we don't see the need for that. And that is unfortunate. It is true. Every Christian should go through that. It is that important. Have you noticed that when we come to the point in our Christianity when we become just wancers, when things are doing fine, you never know enough for anything. You never know enough for anything. You are just a wancer who hears a 30-minute sermon once every week and expect to grow. No, you're not going to grow. Take the same, the, 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 the same system that you use for religion, use it for food. Just eat once a week. Maybe I need to, but just eat once a week. See what happens to you. So the idea is to be established, to establish yourself, to put or place something firmly in our heads. In Luke 22 and verse 32, Christ says something to Peter that we have often mentioned. Luke 22, 32. Remember those words. Peter, this is what Christ said to Peter. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. I don't think you get it yet. Do you get it yet? No, you don't. Let me say what I, what I just mentioned to you. What Jesus Christ said to Peter in about 2930 AD, Peter, when you grow up, you go to strengthen. Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, around 68, 80, more than 30 years later, Peter is doing exactly what Christ said he would do if he grew up. Peter is now strengthening the brethren. He must remember what Jesus said. But before he got here, he went here and there and everywhere. He had to find a way to grow. It's the same Peter who denied Jesus. It's the same Peter who talked too much. Now Peter is the one who is telling people how to live. You see what, where Christ brought him from? Christ can take us from one place to another. But we got to remember in the process of getting there, there will be some difficult times. It will be like what Paul says in Romans chapter 7. The things I want to do, I don't even do them. Peter had to go through that process. So all of us have to go through that process. Don't get mad. Don't get angry because someone wants to help us to grow. Don't question the person's personality. Don't question his tone. Just figure out, is this good for me or not? Because everyone don't have the same disposition. Every one of us don't do things the same way. But if you know for sure this person loves me, forget about the tone, but remember the message. Remember the message. You'll grow. You'll grow. You'll grow. Paul wanted to visit Rome to establish them. Romans chapter 1 verse 11. He says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, you may be established. In First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2, 
Listen to what Paul says to, Tim, uh, to, said to these Christians. And send Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. Didn't Paul do not, enough of that? Not necessarily. But he was not afraid to call Timothy to say, Timothy, you need to go down and help these people out. For that matter, that's one of the reasons why we may have gospel meetings or workshops. Somebody else comes, comes in to establish us. And what they do, they may repeat what we, the preachers, have said. And, and then you are established because of it. In 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 13, Paul says, To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all saints. Listen. And finally, the one last scripture, 2 Thessalonians 2.17. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work or every good word and work. So this is what we learn. This is only verse 3 to verse 12 of 2 Peter 1. And we'll continue on to verse 13 next week, the Lord's willing. So please, let us learn how to be established. Let us not take anything or everything as somebody has something against us. Let us find reasons to learn and to grow despite what other people's attitudes are. Remember, it's my soul. It's your soul. And you are responsible for it. Wherever you are tonight, you're not a Christian. You need to be one. Christ died to set you free. Christ died to save you. And if you believe in him, really believe in him as a son of God, and if you're really willing to change your life in repentance, oh, to confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue, let folks know who Jesus Christ really is, and be baptized. He'll save you. You'll begin a new chapter of your life. So we ex extend you an invitation, whatever your needs are, Call us, write us, email us. We'll be glad to respond to you in some way to bring you closer to Christ. We're going to sing a song at this moment. If you're subject, why don't you make a request known? Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We hope and trust that we have said something to build you up in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to remind you Sunday morning, of course, we will be doing the same thing. Brother Joshua Cantrell will be our speaker this coming Sunday. So tune in at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 6 o'clock to hear this young man preach the gospel of Christ.